Hello folks and welcome to Fey Earth, an indie TTRPG set in an alternate 19th century earth where all the creatures from folklore and fairy tale are real, have always been real and live alongside humanity. Our game is set in the year 1872 in an alternate France that is recovering from a pretty brutal war it lost against the Fey nation of Arcadia that it neighbours. Our heroes have been doing a lot of different things. They found themselves often acting as intermediaries between humans and fey because human-fey relations have become quite strained. Um, they had just finished um, fighting some ghosts in a haunted house and are hopefully going to be moving back to Paris um, soon. But before that, we have a new face at our table. Very excited to announce uh, a new player to the group, Safia. So if you'd like to introduce yourself... Hi everyone, I'm Sophia Dejan. I'm a fantasy writer and I love to write TTRPG content as well as join some streams. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram as Sophia underscore D. And currently I'm working on Cloudbreaker Alliance, which is a fun project that mixes the art of war and anime. If you wanna follow and find a lot of how I like to incorporate Middle Eastern stories and tabletop gaming, follow me. All right, thank you very much. We're very excited to have you. Um, and um, uh, Safi's character, Fruz, will be joining the game at an appropriate moment in the narrative. So, um, the party... Oh, actually, we'll have someone give me a very quick recap of our last session for the inspiration done. I can give that recap. So, the last game we were, I suppose, recruited by a elder brother who was worried about his whereabouts of his younger brother. He had gone into a haunted house at the, I suppose, because of peer pressure, you know, let's call a spade a spade. And the party decided to, hey, listen, we'll do the job because that's what we do. We go around doing things that most people wouldn't. And we went into this haunted house, we scoped it out, and we found that the house was very badly burnt down and it belonged to a doctor who was a monster. And we quickly dispatched him and we found the older brother's younger brother being actually protected by the ghost of the wife of this doctor. And we got the kid, we also got a bit of loot. Uh, Amanada kind of dove straight into that chest. <laughs> and yeah. So that was the end of that, and now the party will be heading towards Paris. Okay, so that you get one D8 inspiration die that you can use at any point um, for an ability test during the game. So, um, you just had a very fun night of celebration with everybody. And be don't forget to use it. <laughs> don't forget to use it. So, I've, I've been fairly good with that, in fairness. You, you are, you're, you're one of the better players for that. So um, you're better than I am. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of celebration having brought back the young boy uh, Robert, um, and you had a good night drinking and food and all the rest of that, and you just had a pretty decent night's sleep. They they made room for you in the house, and then the next morning after breakfast, um, the older brother um, Antoine uh, says that he will drive you to Lyon he knows that's where you were going to be heading next okay um unless anybody has anything really exciting that they wanted to do i am perfectly happy with us doing a time skip because it is two days to paris um it takes you about four or five hours to get to Lyon, and then you're getting a later afternoon train uh, to dijon and spending the night in a guest house there we'll say it's five copper each um and then the train to paris the next day so the, in all total with train tickets and everything we'll say probably about seven eight silver um each for everything okay can we say can we say that during all the travels you seen was like trying to decode and read um sebastian's journal oh absolutely yeah that's something that's that's going to be kind of a, i'm assuming an ongoing thing with you if you're not doing stuff especially if you're in situations like on on trains where you could be comfortably seated seated and um studying and um, that you're going to be doing that and we will be slowly doing some more roles on that um to see how well you're doing okay um 
uh, uh, with, uh, with, with respect to that. Because, like, as we did say, you had some, you have had one or two roles already, and it's like you kind of can follow bits of it, but it's like very advanced. This is stuff that people have theorized, but nobody had ever previously managed to actually. Um, uh, to actually perfect this idea or the uh, a prosthesis that um, somebody could control with their mind. Okay, so um, you arrive in Paris on Sunday, kind of late afternoon, probably about half or five. Um, so far, use of this being crashing at Amanada's parents' pad, and they don't seem to be there a lot. They seem to be very busy people out a lot of the time. So you haven't actually met Amanada's parents yet, okay? Um, you know, all you know is that they're busy, diplomatic-y type people, so they're away a lot, okay? And they have money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, they're not like cr they're not crazy rich like nobility, but they are very well off, okay? Sylvia uh, is at one point going to ask Amanada just like. If your parents were to come home and find us all here, would that be a problem? I would hate for you to get into trouble. Oh, no. Um, it wouldn't be an issue. Back home, it's fairly common for family to just stop by and announce, and we host them for however long they're around. So it's very natural for them to find people in their house that they may not have been prepared for. They Really? Oh, oh yes. if I had done this, I don't even want to think about what my parents would say, especially my father. He hates for anything that is not within his control. He... But your parents would be all right that we are here? Culturally, for us, it's not much of a big deal. It's very much a part of life. Um, we had family who lived all over the country, so and they didn't always write in advance. They didn't always know when they were going to be stopping by. So it's very common for people to stop by. Sometimes my parents have their own guests who just stop by unannounced because they happen to be in Paris. So it's quite it's quite normal. Yes, they might feel a bit surprised, and believe me, you will see when they are surprised. But aside from that, it's perfectly normal. They they're very welcoming people. They've always okay. had an open door policy. I would just hate for you to, you know, to incur the wrath of your parents or, or anything like that. So um... I, I am also an only child, so I do get I do get treated like such. I, I assume I think I think you still would have met uh, I'm another parents. So you see him hearing this conversation, she would come to Sylvia and be like, Don't worry, don't worry, Sylvia. Um, I'm not his parents are lovely. You would love them and they would love you back. There is nothing to worry about. Oh, I, I don't know about that, but that is very reassuring because I, I was worried for you, you know. I, I would oh, for you to No, it it wouldn't be an issue. And plus my parents probably already know about all of you since you've already stayed in the house the housekeeper would have told them about my friends my parents like to keep me safe and they probably already know your names oh okay um all right well if if that's okay all, all right okay this, this is good um sylvia um, we, we do we <laughs> are dip my parents are diplomats it's kind of what they do knowing the people around them it's a part of it's part of who they are they're not judgmental they just want to know how to greet you address you to make sure that your stay is as comfortable as possible so don't worry we're not running around trying to get secrets on your life oh i didn't think that i would just hate for you to be, be in trouble with your parents because well, the last time I was in trouble with my parents, I had to leave and join the army. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so that that is how that went. But um, apologies. Uh, do you think maybe um, when we get to Paris, we could go to uh, Madame Gautier? Oh, of course. Um, I can always get a. I suppose we can try and get a carriage or whatever we need to get there. Um, 
it should be no it should be no problem depending on what time we get there of course so, if we arrive too late we'll have to wait until the morning well you're arriving on sunday so it's closed okay, okay. yeah okay no oh problem. of course right sorry yeah so um yeah so as i said you do arrive in paris and later in the afternoon head to amanada's um home where you are put up people sharing rooms and bundling up because there's like it's not like it's a crazy eight bedroom house but there oh, is no. no but there are there's a couple of guest bedrooms like there's, i think we said there was two guest bedrooms so people are able to bunk up all right mm -hmm. yeah right so um the next day that you get up have, having had breakfast and i believe you said you all wanted to go to madame gautier's yes we oui. Mm -hmm. So you head to the um, shop of the artificer that the party has met, um, is kind of making connections with, when in particular developing connections with. Um, you And you get there about maybe half nine, okay? Um, you it's, it's, it's early in the morning and it's quite quiet, all right? So you see... Um, Madame Gaudier, she's talking. There's a, a she's talking about a woman um, who, who's <clears throat> you're guessing from the conversation, some sort of a dressmaker, okay? And um, she they're talking about some Magitech and uh, enchanted needles are a very common thing that artificers make. Simple needles that you know will just run long, straight seam stitches. Um, which is great when you're doing dressmaking, you know, that you can, they, they, um, it's, you, you won't get needles that can do complex work like embroidery or really complex work like sleeves uh, because sleeves are a curse as anybody who's ever done dressmaking knows. Um, <laughs> but simple things like long seams they can do and, and they're discussing like ways they could try to improve upon this. Because the thing is that within the factories, there are like, automated looms some of which are powered by magic others okay. of which are powered by machinery this is the thing and there is talk people have been working on trying to design a, an automated sewing machine and so we're having a bit of a chat about this and Manon Gaudier is basically saying look i could maybe do something like this but to be perfectly honest with you um i'm not entirely sure how advantageous it would be compared to what we can do with the enchanted needles, you know? And while I have this conversation, you do see is another um, assistant um, just in the background working around um, who you've seen before, slightly darker skin, um, wearing a very unusual blue kind of garment with a gold detailing around the um, the front and the collar, okay? Um, and they, they talk for him, he said, oh, well, I'll have some looks, we'll work on some designs, we'll see what we can do. And he goes, uh, merci, madame. And she goes and she leaves. And as she's leaving, Madame Gaudi looks up to you. She says, Ah, oh, it is my favorite people and my favorite person, gesturing to Gwyn. And then she goes up saying hello to you all. Everybody gets their two kisses. Gwyn gets three. And she's like, How are we all doing? How? Um, and then she turns down to you, me, and she's like, And how is your brother, my dear? He's doing, he's doing quite well, actually. Thank you so much for asking. Um, as soon as he got home, he really improved so much. Um, yeah, so um, I think he's going to be okay. Thank you so much. Then. No, no, of course, of course. Um, a, a horrible thing that happens to him, but um, also, if, uh, as I said before, fascinating as well from a strictly technical perspective, of course. Um, well, I think the arm on its own would have been fine if it had been for this weird plate on its chest and the rest yeah. that happened to him, the you know? extra attachments added to him and the mind control yeah. turning him into a yeah. a soldier, killer. Per, like, I think, the, I think there's huge potential for simple prosthesis for people who have lost limbs. And especially after the war, there's a lot of that. Um Yes, absolutely. Um, but um, nonetheless, um, um, I assume you are all here for a reason. Um, you are not well, idle women. I would like to buy an arcanogram. Oh, you, of course, please. That's that. 
they are very very they're 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 very very simple um um and Farouz, she can take care of that for you gesturing to the assistant um um who then gets goes over to one of the shelves and takes down like arcanograms are like the bread and butter of artifices you know arcanograms mm-hmm. enchanted fairy globes um goblin sparks to light your pipes enchanted needles they are like the bread and butter everyday items that people will buy um you know for their like they, they are everyday common things so like yeah. any artifice is usually going to have at least five arcanograms in stock at any time right okay so um the uh, assistant time. comes up and she's like starts like you know for you um is that one well, the rest of you um anybody interested in anything else um, for the moment, Miss. Thank you so much, Madam. Yeah, Amanana probably wouldn't be looking for anything else. Well, also because you have a legendary magic item, item, I'm not allowed to get you anything have to new. level up a few more levels before you can actually use another magic soon, item. Soon, love, soon. Or you could give someone else the legendary magical ring of invisibility. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> if, if I'm not going to get it in over. I shudder <laughs> to think of the shenanigans. No, a goblin purse. So, I, I just give me a moment here. Actually, yeah, no, I don't have a goblin purse. I only no, have a but I, I, are they? I can't remember if they're rare or very, very rare, or are they just uncommon? They're rare. Thanks. What they're two points. Two points. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so it's two points. So no, um, the the ring is six points, and you're seventh level. So okay. one power point per level. And um, so a legendary item is six power points. So you could get an uncommon item, but so just like you could get some. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things you could get maybe that you might consider, but um, yeah. It's also a hundred gold, guys, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, we like it's not like we're running out of power straight away, so I can always come back if I do decide there's something that I want. Yeah. Well, does the part do you guys want to just like take a minute? Um, um, like you guys can have a chat amongst yourselves about what you would like, you know? Oh, actually, I might I might get some sharpening oil for my cane sword. Yeah, we could certainly do yeah. that. Um, and that is um, that is a um, a consumable. No, it's it, it's a oh, it, so it's it a consumable, so it doesn't it doesn't count. You know. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Because looking at the sheet, it says. Okay. I thought you. I, I don't know why I thought like sharpening oil. You'd like actually clean the blade. No, 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 that doesn't. You do, but it because it's consumable. It's a set number of doses. Any mm-hmm. consumable doesn't count. Deadly. Okay, yeah, no, I'll definitely, I'll probably get maybe two of those. Well, so you are looking to get, apologies, um, oil of, uh, so you're looking to get the oil of, so there's a few different things you can get. There's the oil of true char- sharpness, so when you use it um, to sharpen the blade against the following properties, it, this is what Mina has for Albert. Um, it's considered... The, the weapon becomes considered magical for the purpose of um, when attacking creatures and vulnerable to mundane items uh, on mundane weapons. And with the blade also ignores non-metal mundane armor. Okay? okay. Um, the armor rating for mundane metal is halved and non-metal armor made from hides of magical creatures and, and stuff is reduced by two, but it has no impact on enchanted armor and lasts for five days, and a standard bottle holds 20 doses. Okay, yeah. I'll and, then, get and, and one bottle is 50 gold. Okay, so, so I'll get one of those, but I also want to get the sharpening oil. That the, is the sharpening oil. Oil of true sharpness. Or you think there's something else? That's it, yeah. No, there's one on the un- oh, uncommon list. That's it. Yeah, that one. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, there's that one, which is a simpler version. Okay. Um, all, yeah, that, just... all, all that one does is just um, makes, like, it just makes them sharper <gasps> and impervious to rust. And they gain a, um, they gain a plus one um, mm-hmm. to damage and are considered magic for the, per- but they don't have all the uh, effects on armor. 
And also, I'd like to get... Actually, I think that might be what Albert has as well, is the sharpening oil, not the other one. Because that's 100 doses. I got the one with the 100 doses, yeah, actually. Yeah, that's the sharpening, yeah, oil. sharpening oil. So, so um, you, uh, you want to get that to 25 gold? Yeah, no, I'll get, I'll get the, the ingestible one. I'll also get the sharpening oil, and I would like to get some goblin picks and more sure shots. Good call. Sure, hmm. okay. So goblin picks, they're 10. Yep. Okay, for a pack of picks. Okay, and um, the uh, a bottle of Sure Shot. That's your plus one, and they these are um, in a pack of um, I believe it's twenty, um, and that is oh no, sorry, it's not. It's a pack of five, and they're um, they're one gold each. Okay, dokey. So uh, now, I mean, I know you have a lot of treasures you just found, um, and uh, there's a couple of more expensive things that some of the party might want to get. So if you guys want to have a chat amongst yourselves for a minute and be like, just one moment, Madame Godier, we're just going to go over here for a minute. You guys can be talking about that. Hmm. Um, well, I was thinking of getting a moon lamp to help us in case we had any more adventures into the Fey Realm. It's more that's for, for portals, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. So now the thing with them is like you've got your yeah, your moon lamp. So what they do is they give off a glow that mimics the properties of moonlight. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And if you also have um some moon dust, which is really expensive. One thing at a time. Of that, at a, time. a handful of that thrown in the air on, on a full moon. If it lands on a spot that is a portal to the Fey Realm, it reveals an altar support. Yes. So you yeah, can get a moon. Really you can, you can get a moon realm. lamp, but the moon lamp on its own won't necessarily work without moon dust. Oh, I know. Yeah, it's just one thing at a time, and that's yeah. what I can afford. I just um, know there have been many occasions in the past where we've needed to get into a fey realm, and it is ha or into like a fey mound, and it yeah. is handy to have. So I'm gonna get that, mm -hmm. the pot yeah. of brewing, and a fairy cloak, which are just two comfort items. Okay, so. Fairy yeah, um, the fairy cloak. So a fine garment made usually of tightly woven but usually light woolen fabrics. Normally they come to mid calf with holes for the arms and offer some protection from the elements. They will keep the wearer warm and dry in all but the most torrential rain and freezing weather. They do not, however, shrink or expand as more powerful garments are known to do. So when you purchase one, you know, you, you'd be like, it may or may not be the correct size, okay? That's and then cool. what was the other thing you said you wanted to get a pot of um, brewing pot of brewing so this is and um safia you would probably appreciate this a enchanted pot and um the magic of them is such that whenever you add tea leaves of any sort and cold water the pot instantly heats the water to the perfect temperature for the type of leaf in the pot Sounds glorious. Wait, I would love that. Sylvia so doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So She's yeah, the crushing. pot of brewing is five gold. <laughs> a fairy cloak is five, and a moon lamp is fifteen. Um, 15. Yeah, I just have a running list, running shopping list. So it's whatever I can afford at the moment. But so the only thing that costs you a power point is that moon lamp. So you need to yeah. be checking what where you're at power points wise. Because you're nearly full as well, I think, are you? I'm nearly full, but I have one or two left. I'll okay. Just check. Yeah, I think you're all right. That the pendant is only one PowerPoint. Uh, I have a quick question yes. about bracelet of accuracy. Uh huh. I thought I, you might. <laughs> uh, I can't see if it's got any power. It's uncommon, Three. so it's one. Okay. Cool. So I do, I do have, I can you, get that. You could get that if you wanted to. And um, when using a projectile weapon, you get a plus one uh, bonus to your attack. So that would be a plus one bonus to attack with your revolver. Deadly. Okay. Or if you were to throw a dagger or something silly like that. Yeah. Okay. Jesus, the shopping list. 
Now they are expensive. That's fifty gold. I know, I know, but it will like it. It's handy. What if I don't have any like short shot or anything like that? You know. Well, so. it's like that stacks as well. Like all of those modifiers stack, so it's a permanent plus one when attacking with a projectile with a ranged weapon. So if you're firing your revolver and you have plus one bullets of sure shot, that's now and you've got the bracelet of accuracy. That's a plus, that's two, plus two. You know, so it does stack. Yeah. Okay. I will be getting that as well. And. Yeah, I'll leave that for now. Okay, right. So, anybody got any other stuff that they're looking to get? Um, Our canograms, they're only 10 gold. 10 gold, they? yes. You have one. I have you a work have one. one. It, yeah, but it doesn't matter. It's As long as you know the code, you send the message. Yeah, true. Okay, right. fine. So, if you want to send a message via our canogram, you just need to know the glyphs for the recipient. Okay, okay. Basically, a mobile phone. Um, Basically, <laughs> mobile, yeah. No, Mina's gonna go up to Madame Gochi and is like, um, you were saying before that you might be able to do some enchantments on um, Albert, but um, I was just wondering like, what you might be able to do and um, how long and how much it would uh, cost me. Well, as I said before, it all depends on what manner of enchantment you would like. Um, so do you want to make the blade a blade that is enchanted so that it keeps a sharper edge at all times, has a magical energy in it so will work against creatures that are immune to mundane weapons such as specters and certain types of fey do you want it to be slightly better than just a simple honed blade or do you want it to have specific abilities hmm what could you do um like sharp would definitely be something although i do you know look after him and the oil has really helped mm. but could you maybe put some extra ability maybe some lightning can. or something like that lightning absolutely i love the idea of this now we are getting into a proper conversation my dear so um, would you be so kind as to, I assume that, um, your weapon is in your purse? Oh, yes. Yeah. She, Mina pulls out Albert. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. I see. Okay. It's a fine quality blade. Um, it's, if it was made of maybe fey iron, then it would hold an enchantment more easily and more strongly, but it's still a good, good quality blade. Would give it a enchantment that would make it hold an edge more surely, and in in we could we could give it an like I suppose it all depends on what what kind of additional powers you wanted to have. If you wish that every time you strike with it, it also summons lightning and electrical energy in the attack. That would be very powerful, difficult, expensive item to make if we gave it an ability such that you could summon lightning through it a number of times in a single day. That would be less expensive. Okay, okay, okay. Um... Are you? Is it possible if I choose, let's say, to summon lightning a couple of times during the day that at a later stage, if I have more funds, maybe I could change the job? Or is that not possible? You would not necessarily be able to change it, but we could build on it. Fantastic. That's or, I mean, we could build on an existing enchantment or add a secondary enchantment. Oh, well, that sounds interesting. Um, yeah, so if we start with the 
like summon lightning a couple of times because depending on who I fight, you know, mm -hmm. I might need the extra oomph. Mm -hmm. How much would we talk about here? Give me a moment, please. And she goes and she, she, she pulls out a ledger and she starts writing it and taking some calculations and, and challenge cost and K and K. How soon do you need it? Uh, well, we haven't really have any plans for the moment, so I don't think it's that. Um, because the um, urgency uh, would urgent. impact the price. Um, I could put such an enchantment on it and have it ready for you in about two weeks and that would cost about 150 gold i could have it done for you in five days but that would be closer to 300 gold right 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 okay okay so um just just, well, as, just as a reminder a lot of, yeah um the treasures that you found in the haunted house the golden necklace set with rubies and emeralds you estimate to be worth about 150. Yeah, because if I buy that, I'm bankrupt, basically. Um, well, Mina, I think we can agree that Albert is a member of the party, and you certainly have my blessing if you wish to add on this enchantment to him. Yeah, I think it's Absolutely. a good idea. He is very, he is very, he's been very helpful in so many of our encounters, so. Oh, guys, nice. you're so sweet. We, we wouldn't be alive if not for Albert. Yeah. Albert the Halbert. I'm not You're I'm not so buying sweet. anything. So um I'll I'll consider it in, as an investment into my own future. Yeah, mm. that's a good way of looking at it. So I'll trade in the uh what was it, the necklace? So do you take out the gold yeah. necklace and she sees that and she's like, Oh my, this is this is quite precious. If you don't mind my asking, where did you find such an exquisite piece? Oh, some haunted house. Don't even get me there. Of course, uh, of course. <laughs> A haunted house, of course. Yes, uh, we helped. Um, we helped a brother locate his younger brother, and in the in this house that had been effectively abandoned, we managed to find. The, I suppose the, the specters of the people used to live there as well as mm. the wife's old belongings and oh. seem to have gotten her blessing to take them. Mm. I've dealt with specters once or twice. Ghastly creatures. Yeah. Oh, well, in, there was one main specter and the other was a very helpful ghost. So Most of the time they're horrible creatures because they can't move on because there's something trapping them. And to be honest with you, between you oh, and me... he was an awful, most, horrible... Yeah, most of the time, person. yeah, people mm -hmm. whose souls get trapped here don't get trapped here because they were lovely, wholesome people. No. People. Yeah. Yes. So anyway, um, well, this would be a perfectly fair trade. Uh, well, merci beaucoup, Madame Boutier. That is amazing. Um, also, while we are here, we were also wondering if you have any more jobs lined up. You know where to find us. Well, actually, now that you say that, you have proven yourselves to be a formidable group of women especially like after that the um excursion to the fame that, that i asked and you to and albert do. and ancladon and um and um from what i hear you're fighting ghosts now as well yeah there is one particular thing that i've been wanting to do for some time but i haven't found the right people um this would be a this would be certainly a somewhat difficult job Ah, oh, they're all difficult. I'm Master. interested. Yeah. <laughs> so, would it be uh, more? Would you consider it more difficult than the fame mount you sent us into? In in a different way, perhaps. You know what? It is not going to be worse. I hope. Than uh, well, the mad scientist. Well, before, before if it's a bit more difficult, in, we should. We might have pets. to renegotiate our fees. So, anyway. There was an artificer that lived in the city. 
um, oh, it was some time ago um, that they lived here about, he'd lived in the city for about 150 years. It was a goblin, you see. Oh, okay. um, yes. And it was interesting, though, because he, he used to mostly just make magical trinkets that he would sell and trade. I know several times industrialists approached him, asking him to make Magitek machinery for the factories, but he was never interested. But then, one day, the goblin, uh, Philo, was what we called him. No one actually knew if that was his real name or not. Um, and you know Philo just means trickster. Um, one day, he just left. No one knows where he le went. And completely left behind his home. His home's in a very, very nice part of the city, but it does look out of place. You would spot it immediately. And on occasion, over the decades, he's been gone about three decades now, every every four or five years, some fools would, would go inside, usually criminals, who'd most often get, not even get past the front gardens. Um, um, and if they did, they'd come out barely alive, claiming the house was full of traps, and so forth, but they you would usually come out with some interesting small little magical trinkets that would be of value. And this is certainly something I would be interested in seeing what kind of magical trinkets might have been left behind by this trickster. Mm, I'm intrigued. Um, yeah, I'm I'd be also be very curious as to why so, he Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, he's Faye. Faye just sometimes leave. That's that is what they do. Uh, I think we maybe should go to go and have some tea, discuss this, uh -huh. you know, look at all aspects of the situation before we well, just jump head first, no? Why do you do you not yeah, that's a good want idea. To, to do the job? Well, it's not that I don't want to do the job. A job is a job. However, it's we should always think about the jobs that we're going to do. We shouldn't just say, oh, yes, we we should do this. Um, like yeah, you said, this, this person is literally called a trickster. Maybe his home is booby-trapped or something. Oh, you know? yeah, we know that no, his, no, no, home, no, no, his no. home it's, is booby-trapped. He's just been told. Definitely full of traps. Yeah. So, well, what time is it now? It's about lunchtime, right? Oh, it's so early. Let's go it's well it's, then, let's go and have have second petit déjeuner yeah, then, right? So exactly. we go to the <laughs> cafe and mm -hmm. then we go and um, have some croissants mm. and we should, you know, have a quick chat among us. But uh, I think we're very intrigued. Let's just say that. Of course, I'm. I'll be here all day. Please go have something nice to eat, and hopefully, I will talk to you all soon. Brilliant. Let's see, Madame. Looking forward to seeing you later. Oh, as I am you, my dear. So you guys head out um, to, you find a little cafe somewhere. Um, you get some coffee, you get some pain au chocolat, um, some croissant. Um, you know, it's... So Mina is straight up coming to the point because she's Swiss and she's interested in money. And there <laughs> you go. Right. So, um, so she says like, well, the last time I think we got 10%. Ten percent? No, 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 no. We got ninety percent. We got ninety yes. percent. Oh, the, got all of magical the treasure items. She took some magical we items. Got, we got, she got the magical items. Okay, and we yeah. got ninety percent. Okay, 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 okay. So I just I have some questions. Why are we not taking the job? We know well, we're not quite sure what is there. Maybe we should have a. What that's. Look. That's just what I was thinking. We don't quite know. I know the last few jobs we've gotten, we've been jumping in feet first, and each of these jobs that we will be getting will become increasingly more and more difficult. We have mm -hmm. to look at this a bit more holistically and not just for what's on the other end of this. Yes, it's okay. great to have gold, it's great to have the funds, but we do need to maybe just pause and think and you know, assess the situation a bit better. Okay, so we go to the house and we look, but ultimately I think that we could take the job, yeah? Well, we, um, some scouting. So, so, miss. Yeah. yeah, but the this means is like, that we are taking the job. 
Um, and the question is that, you know, in the Fey Mount, there was an awful lot of gold. Mm -hmm. The question is like, you know, I mean, what kind of trinkets are left there? And they're probably mostly magical items um, that she would be interested in. So like, hmm. Mm. That is true. I mean, he may not have a lot of gold. And yeah. so perhaps we could bargain to keep some of the magical items because I'm sure there yeah. would be many. Yeah. You see, this is maybe we could have for a flat ray to be paid mm -hmm. like straight out, you know. This was my thinking because this, like, just being able to sit down and talk about it, we're seeing other exactly. angles. Whereas if we just said we and agreed to our terms, we could have come away with very little gold. She gets all the trinkets and. Where would that that's be exactly off? that's exactly why i uh, agreed and thought like you know where better to mm -hmm. discuss this than over some second breakfast now <laughs> Absolutely. yeah we got an awful lot of gold last time but I must, honestly if it's just one fate that was a mount so there is mm -hmm. lots of fate right a mass probably some treasure i'm not sure how it works but the one goblin? Hmm. Yeah, maybe maybe we could negotiate some kind of flat rate. For this somebody who would like to give me guys... um, a phalo roll to try and figure out yeah. what they remember about goblins? I will do so. And would they have brought it with them? Can I assist? I have a plus two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you have phalo? Yep. Plus two. Probabilis probabilistically, you're better off just rolling separately. Okay. Uh, so I got an 18. 16. I got an 18. Yeah, you were all too. 18 as well. So mm -hmm. I'll say uh, with that, with those rolls. So what you know about goblins? Goblins are famous as tricksters um, and, and artifices. They are, since since this industrial age has started, many true fae that had lived in human settlements and cities have moved out because the cities have become kind of horrible to live in. They're full of smoke and smog all the time. Two exceptions of this are the dwarves and the goblins. They don't seem to mind it so much, okay? So in a major city like Paris, the, to hear that there was a goblin artificer is not that shocking at all. And um, they love to make trinkets, and they do tend to be, they do enjoy their wealth as well. So um, they would, you know, whore, not poor, but they would acquire a lot of wealth and would make a lot of money from the sale of their of their enchanted items that they produce. Now, would they have took took taken taken that with them? So that's the thing, you, and this is where things get a bit more difficult to know because mm -hmm. sometimes there are some fae, some clans of fairy that are migratory, and they will move from one site to another at fixed periods during the calendar year. Okay. And then you have other fae that will just randomly one day leave. And mm -hmm. maybe they come back in 200 years time. Or maybe they don't come back at all. Mm -hmm. And in those instances when those fae do randomly leave, sometimes they'll take all their stuff with them. Sometimes it, it, see, sometimes it, it, sometimes it seems like they took nothing. But it's hard mm -hmm. to know because the fae can have so much by way of treasures and wealth and possessions that they might have taken a load of stuff but actually still had loads to leave behind. So it's 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 I'm not trying to be obtuse here. It's really yeah, difficult yeah, yeah. to know. From what Madame Gauthier did say though, men and criminals and gangs who have managed to sneak into the actually get into the house and get out have always come back with like little magic items and trinkets that they've then been able to sell to make some money from. So uh -huh. if you go in there, you could at the very least probably expect to find a couple of enchanted items that you know, an artificer would think these are valuable and well, yeah, she would take, that was the yeah. deal last time. Um, like, yeah. yeah, but that was different. That was a mound where you were told, oh, well, there's exactly. also treasure. So something like this, mm -hmm, maybe mm -hmm, you can mm -hmm. negotiate that she gets first refusal to purchase the items off you. You know, that that's up for you yeah. to, to, to negotiate in your oh, um, that directions. Might be, that might be a good idea. Maybe a flat rate and then say, like, listen, whatever you want to pay. Uh, whatever you want to buy, you can buy. So we are taking. And we sell the rest. Like uh, you see, it's going yeah, to just. Yeah, we are, we are taking it. We're just mm. trying to figure out what kind of payment we would like for it. You see. Uh, so perhaps we should go back and chat to Josephine. I think this was useful to discuss the the winnings for us. So uh, let's say we go back and try and offer her a different deal. 
Me, Justin? Uh, yeah. No, Justin was just going to finish her croissant and coffee and just stand up and be like, I don't even know why we're talking about it. We've been through so many things. Famous, Enchanted yeah, Forest, no, absolutely. with Melvin Quinn. Why are we discussing a goblin all of a sudden, for God's sake? So she's just going to stand up and just, just walk towards Madame Gautier. I'm just discussing it for payment, mm -hmm. but yeah, sure, I'm, uh, I'm just following so, her. Yeah, following her, okay. <laughs> yeah. So you head back inside and um, you see Madame Gautier, she's just sitting there sipping her coffee. Her assistant's in the back pottering around with some stuff. I just, ah, you're back. So I take it you have come to a decision? We yes, I believe we have. Uh, we will take you up on the offer on the condition that we do get to keep some of the magical trinkets. Okay. What percentage were you thinking of? Well, I mean, I suppose it depends on the items. I would be more than happy to pay you for these items at a fair price. Um, if you wish to keep them for yourself, well, obviously, then they are, that that's your own payment, if you will. Um, so what are you suggesting? I think that sounds reasonable, and Gwen will turn to the group just to get their their final say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Me? Wonderful. Well, that, sounds, that sounds good. That yeah, sounds we give good. you the first offer of whatever you would like. That sounds very, very reasonable. Well, listen, just before you go, Gwen, I just have a little something for you. And she reaches over and takes a, a box. For me. Um, uh, it's a small a 4 a sized box, not that deep, and hands it to you. It's just a way for us to keep in contact with each other better. Oh, well, I will open it later. And inside, well, when, <laughs> if and when you do open it, it's just an arcanogram. Oh, lovely. Thank you, my dear. And Gwen will just give her a kiss on the cheek. Um, uh, before we go, I noticed you have... Your shop is busier than ever. Perhaps you should introduce us to some of your assistants. Oh, this is uh, Farouz. Lovely to meet you, Farouz. Bonjour, Farouz. Lovely to meet you. Hello, hi. And what you see is a um, an olive-skinned um, woman with these slightly elvish pointing ears. Uh, her hair is wavy and quite long. In, um, in kind of a, a sensible braid that kind of got messy throughout the days, uh, throughout the day. And her hair is um, uh, a dark brown, but anyone who might pay closer attention uh, might see uh, that the roots seem to have some sort of other color. Uh, and um, her eyes are uh, gold with a bit of a sparkle to them, very uh, strong set, uh, thick eyebrows. And her eyes look as uh, her eyelashes are quite thick that look like she has almost like a natural um, eye, uh, eyeliner on her. And um, uh, she just looks at each one of you and says, Sorry for slightly accidentally overhearing, but all of you do sound a bit uh, like an interesting bunch. Um, could I also have an introduction? Uh, we, uh... Of course, my dear, and apologies. Yes, um, my name's Gwen. Um, I'm from Cornwall, and uh, I have some magical ability um, of the folk magic variety. And um, I was actually headed to Paris when I met uh, my companions here in a small village while I was waylaid. And fate has just taken us on all sorts of adventures together. Um, my name is Justine. I'm from Ghent in Belgium. I'm a sorcerer. Um, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> and uh, you, you, you see something is kind of moving around Justine's neck, um, like a like a big sort of scarf. And she's sort of like, oh, and that's Antla gone the Great, and you see a fairy dragon. A, a, a oh. cat-sized um, um, fairy dragon with beautiful dark scales, whose head just pops out, um, having been camouflaged to appear like a large bulky scarf, the head has appeared out of its folds. I don't think I've ever seen that, and it's amazing. 
Justine, Justine likes you um, instantly because <laughs> because Anklagon the Great is, is the baby. He is, he is the child yeah. of the group. And uh, mm. the great. Yes. He <laughs> loves. He, he loves. He loves nuts and berries, and if you have some, you can give it to him, and you can pet him. I'll keep that in mind. Uh, Sylvia is just gonna like tight reach into one of the reach into her bag. She's gonna give you a little like crumb that you, like nuts or something that you can feed him. Sylvia always carries snacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, oh, thank you, and I'll 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 take it, and I'll um um cautiously give it to him not because she's scared but out of just not wanting to like shove it in his face <laughs> so just so just like a gentle here you go if you want it oh he he wants it he absolutely wants it he's spoiled <laughs> um my name is Amanata. I'm so sorry I noticed you earlier, but I was there was so much happening and buying new stuff. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to meet no, you. Shopping, I love what you're wearing. You know, shopping for magical items is a very serious. Oh, thank you. Um, it's from my hometown. I'm I'm from Damascus. Oh, I'm well, Malian and French as well. So. Mm -hmm. I'm Mina. Um, um, I'm from Switzerland. Um, I'm part of the giant fighters uh, from Switzerland, and um, it's very, it's a pleasure to meet you. I've I've only read about Damascus in a, in in books. I never actually met anyone from from there. So that, it's a it's a real pleasure. Yeah, most of Mina's knowledge of Damascus and the Middle East would be her knowledge of the Holy Land from Stories of the Crusade. And just for the record, when Mina said giant fighters, she didn't mean that the fighters are giant. Mina is tiny. Yes. They're <laughs> fighters. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my she is, is a tiny little, yeah, like, Mina you know, so like, tiny. Uh, uh, <laughs> tiny, tiny, tiny girl with uh, green hair and amber eyes, and um, yeah, she's like. And um, you met my Halbert before. Um, that's the weapon yes. of choice of our of our um, order, and uh, yeah, I just gave it to, I gave him to Madame Gautier to be uh, uh, enhanced somewhat, upgraded. One could say. <laughs> I'm sure he'll look amazing after the makeover. Yeah, my my and name is Sylvia. I come from Berlin. Um, there's not much else. I I also have some magic. Um, I am a druid, so I have healing magics and magics of nature. But I kind of I have um, have also learned how to uh, remove curses as well. So this is useful. Um, well, oh, she I saved her life some... a couple of times uh, for healing. Everyone's lives a couple of times. And you saved our lives with Halber, with, with Albert. So you know it swings. Yeah, yeah we keep out. each other's backs. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We keep each other's backs. Yeah, I think we make a good team. Parus, um, am I pronounced that correctly? Just want to check. Yeah, Ferus. Ferus, thank you very much. Um. Would would the madam actually be open to you maybe coming with us on this particular one? I know you accidentally overheard, but you seem quite interested and we're always looking for more bodies to help. Well, uh, thank you for kind of giving me an easy leeway into this topic, actually. Um, so my overhearing is accidental, but um, I am actually curious and interested and I find myself in a bit of a um, interest of leaving the city and just exploring more so I would be interested in joining if you would have me 
Oh, uh, of course. Of course. Um, Amanada at that point is just going to go over to the counter and try and find just like some scrap paper and is going to quickly jot down their address and say, this is where we'll be staying. Um, if you want to come over this evening, I'm sure we could maybe all have a nice meal together, get to know each other a bit more, and then we can go and investigate. Sound good? Sounds lovely. I'm excellent. I look forward to it. Thank you so much for inviting me to your house. You're very welcome. You have oh, a very another, nice energy. Another person to help, you know, another pair of hands. So I metaphorically, you, you know what I mean. I... Uh, it, for, Sylvia sometimes is not, uh, they don't always. Put... Sylvia is looking, Sylvia's <laughs> looking at you. What are you going to fucking say? <laughs> I was going to say, Sylvia sometimes does not convey their true meanings as well as they'd like to. But we are all very excited to have you around. I'm sure that's what Silvio was hoping to say. And by profession, I am a diplomat, if you haven't already guessed. And what you'd see is Amanada would have kind of similar hair, I think, to yours in that the roots are fairly dark, but the tips have shades of different shades of green. They're brown skinned. They're wearing more typical French fashions at the moment, but their color scheme would be more inclined, will be more aligned with African colors and prints. So mm. nice. Yeah. Right. So, right. Madame Gautier, uh, quick, have quick, quick question. If it takes two weeks to enchant Albert, are we doing the job before that? Are we going net like nowish, soonish? Because then I would wait to have that done after oh, the job. Well, yeah, you see. I Discussions. I mean, we may, we may need to. You, Mina is not. Or... You, you are not completely defenseless without <laughs> your your halberd, okay? Um, but he'd be handy to have around. Let's be honest. <laughs> so you 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 oh, can't. You mean my your... penis eyes is already starting to twitch? Like, what do you mean? I cannot go anywhere. So you are without not, my emotional support, Halbert. So you you of course have the uh, arcane shard cantrip, and you are a trained pugilist. I am a trained pugilist, is, indeed. Yes, yes, yes. But it's my is, emotional support, Halbert. Halbert. I don't think his scene is ready to go anywhere without Halbert either. I think mm -hmm. it's, I think <laughs> it's her emotional support as well. Like I agree. Gwen looks horrified at the prospect. <laughs> Okay. Right, if we're going now, I'll have him. I'll have him enchanted later. To, the oil will do for now, please. I um, yeah, I refuse to part with my emotional support. I, of course. Well, I tell you what. When you come back from well, the after. expiration, I can start the enchantment day. Fantastic! Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Of course, of course. Right. So then she also then she goes. Um, because I'm not a Europe by the counter because you'd gone up to grab a piece of paper to write down the address for for I, Ruse. I I brought it back for for yeah, so yeah. we're all kind of together yeah. again. But um, Madame Gautier, um, she takes a pen and in beautiful, elegant handwriting, like her, her handwriting is just it's exquisite, you know. Um, she writes down the address that the Goblin Artificer's house is in. And you, uh, being a native of Paris, you're you you you'd know this are these mod. It's it's like, it's not like the craziest. Like we're not talking quite Aylesbury Road level here. Mm -hmm. um, for our non-Irish listeners, Aylesbury Road is one of the most expensive roads in all of Ireland in which to own a house. It is full of embassies and three plus million euro houses yes, that are true. actually not that big despite being that price um so it's not quite that level but it's like still in a pretty damn nice part of the city okay right so with that information and with you planning on heading back um with Ferus joining you later um to discuss the plans um i think right now is a perfect moment to take a pause in our story so we will be back, folks, in five minutes' time. Don't go anywhere. Just very quick, people need to refill their cups of teas and so forth. And then we will be right back to you 
So see you all very soon. Okay.
Hello everybody and welcome back to Fair, their indie TTRPG set in an alternate 19th century Earth, where all the creatures from folklore and fairy tale are real, have always been real, and live alongside humanity. Well, last we left our heroes, the party having returned to Paris had gone to the um, store of Madame Josephine Gautier, this stunningly beautiful and quite vivacious artificer that they have met. Um, they had a number of items that they wanted to purchase, having recently found some money um, when exploring a haunted house and um, saving a young child. And they have now been offered another contract by Madame Gautier. And this time they've been asked to explore the abandoned home of a goblin artificer. While here they met um, one of Madame Gautier's assistants, um, a very interesting and quite, quite stunning uh, woman by the name of Ferouz, who um, says they're originally from Damascus um, and is very interested in um, hanging along on this little uh, adventure. So, um, moving on, we said that um, the um, that you's all headed back to um, you's all headed back to Amanada's family's home. I mean, if there's any other like random little tidbits and jobs you need to do, we can just say that you get them all done. Um, you can also, if you want, do you think you would maybe swing by the home to have a look at it first, do a little bit Ooh. of scouting? Absolutely. Yep. Amanada will want to do some scouting with that okay. legendary ring. Oh, you're going to go in? We'll see. Cool. Will I do, we, I do have new picks. So, um, we, you... I uh, wait till first. Maybe you send, send <laughs> well, Anki to fly around, look at into the window and stuff, you know? That might be an idea. So, you... But you, I thought we were waiting for... Well, this... We said we're just... Yeah. I've asked for you just scouting. Okay. Yeah, I think there is no scout. point to scout right now, because... Um, correct me if I'm wrong. If it's, like, full of traps and everything, things could be changing in there. We don't know. We don't know what kind of technology is in Yes, in you are. Yeah, that, that, is you, that is why you've got all the prints. Um, we okay. We will wait until later. Um, we might as well just go back to the house, get settled in. Mm -hmm. I will talk to the housekeeper and about dinner. And yeah. Okay. Lovely. So you chill. Lovely. Yeah. Spend the rest of the. Well, that's happening. Sylvia wants to just very quickly. Um, right to her brother, just in, it, she's going to use the barracks glyph. Absolutely, yeah. So you and it's, a... but it's, but it's very brief. Like for the attention of Major Heinrich Bauer, you know, it's just going to be back in Paris, cured. The villagers' lycanthropy. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just like, please um, don't worry. Include you would also include your um. You, your return list for a message to be sent back. Oh yeah, this is this is I bought an arcanogram. Now you can contact me anytime. Absolutely not a problem at all. Okay. Um, this is my phone number. <laughs> this yeah. is yeah. So the arcanogram is the perfect um, ma enchanted mass communication device for the millennial generation. Communication purely by text. You never have to actually speak to the other person. It's I I wish life was like that. <laughs> yes. So lovely. Good uh, uh, um, lovely. Yes. Well well during the afternoon, yeah, Mina will wander around. She will go find a nice haberdashery because she thinks after the stellar performance that um Albert did last time, he deserves like new decorations and things. So she's gonna see if she can find like some sort of tassel for the handle, mm -hmm. and she's gonna find like you know a gorgeous sort of tassel in her favorite colors, yeah. purple and silver, and um, she will also see if she can find some leather worker and mm -hmm. then order a new handle, like you new know grip. cover, yeah, grip, um, Not a nicely problem. decorated or uh, Albert. Yeah, so you do find um, kind of a saddlerish type shop that will happily do that for you. Perfect. They say, they're like, if you will leave it here, madame, I can have it for you tomorrow. Um, or you could come, if you want to come tomorrow and leave it in then. Um, you do find some ribbons and some tassels with those kinds of colors, though. 
Purples and golds, it's expensive, okay? So we're going to... Purples and silver, yeah. Purple and silver, sorry. It's it's still expensive, okay? So we'll say it's probably like... <laughs> um, everything, the new leather grip, the ribbons, the tassels, that'll be like two silver, okay? You know, which is a lot of money, you know? Um, remember, to put into context for people, the average factory worker would earn between eight to ten silver for a week's work. So two silver... Two silver, that's like, that's, you know, I'll that's tell be the, two days' uh, worth of pay. If, yeah, it is. Yeah. If I need to pay more because I want the, the grip to be nicely decorated with, like, some Edelweiss and, yeah. Oh, oh, okay, that'd be an extra silver, mademoiselle. Um, but I that can certainly do perfect. it. And, you deserve and it. it'll take me more, it'll take me maybe two days' work uh, if we're doing yeah. the additional take the, take the kind of measurements you need because oh, I'll take it course, and then I'll yeah. come to have it fitted. But again, yeah, course. I would love to. Uh, he needs to look pretty, you know. Of course. So um, eventually later on that evening, um, Ferruz, you arrive up at this pretty fancy looking house. You're like, shit, okay, right. She's one of them. At 1%. <laughs> no, oh God, no, please. <laughs> Don't eat me. <laughs> so, uh, uh, for context, how does the house compare to Feiruz's parents' home in Damascus? Um, it's slightly nicer. Okay. 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 It, it, like, your parents are, was you, you came from quite a comfortable background. Um, we discussed, mm -hmm. like, you know, not crazy super rich, but you were from a very comfortable, successful family. This house is, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not like a lot nicer, but it is slightly nicer. Okay. You know? I mean, if you were to tell your father you had found a man who's going to marry you and you showed him this house, he'd be very happy. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> there, there, there's your context. Okay. <laughs> comfortable, comfortable yes. background. Perfect. Yeah. We like comfortable backgrounds because yeah. I was minority there with my comfortable backgrounds. Everyone's like traumatized. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Gwen um, has had a very lovely life. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes. No trauma here. Yes. Mm. Like, that's that's her why her she went on like exactly. a crusade to kill all the men in the world. Exactly. I'm just saying, fucking yeah, nothing very at this nice point. Life. Yeah. I'm saying um, so, Farouz, <laughs> I have a very important question. What do you bring with you to the house? Yes. So, um, Farouz is going to bring with her, um, like, I was I was trying to quickly look up the 1700s pastries in France. <laughs> it doesn't uh, have to be. Of, I mean, you yeah, would have had time. You, you, um, you, but you would have time yeah. to have gone home. Like, you, you have a little... It's a little kind of room that you have. So you would have had time to go home if you wanted to make something. Perfect. Yeah. Then uh, I would have would have gone home and would have made something. I, I assume there wasn't time, so I thought she'd pick up something. Uh, so what I would bring with me would be uh, this tray that's quite big enough to feed three times the, the size of the party here. It's a dessert tray of something called Bespusa. Which is like a semolina dessert uh, that is uh, made very with honey and um, I don't know how to describe bespusa. I'll send a picture. <laughs> um, and it has like almonds in it. It's very sweet. It's quite dense and decadent. Uh, but if someone is used to chocolate and sugar being dessert, this would be quite unique to them. Okay. Um, it has a golden layer and then the inside, it kind of feels like, um, think of if there was a lot of phyllo pastry that's very condensed to, down, but it's really made of this uh, semolina cake and it has, um, it's flavored with rose water. Uh, see, I knew, I and, knew that, wow. I knew that coming from Damascus, and, there's no way you could arrive as a guest. <laughs> Oh no! I have the hand. No, no. <laughs> never. Yeah, yep. so that's never. why I no had Arab. to ask. No Arab would no. ever do that. No Arab would ever do that. <laughs> oh, oh, like, oh, like it's in my it's in, in so my long. head, in my head. As soon as she said to come, I was already thinking, okay, what am I bringing? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. If you <laughs> say, oh, and yeah, it's, it's been it, so long it, since I've had it. Was for and now I'm like. Where can I get some in Ireland? <laughs> no, uh, maybe in the if you the best chance to probably go to the mosque in Klonski. 
Actually, yeah, that yeah. like They've got a big the restaurant there. there. So that'd be her best bet. <laughs> There's a very, very yeah. large mosque near where Susie and I live. Like it's the biggest in the country. So th- and they've got a famously like you wonderful mean restaurant. Opposite where I live. It is literally opposite where yeah. Christina lives. Yeah. So yeah, that would be the best yeah. bet. Yeah. So it's anyway. Back, it's such a good uh, dessert, honestly. It yeah. is one of my oh god, it's so good. It's How is it similar? Uh, so baklava is quite different because it's a lot more filled with nuts and mm-hmm. it's basically different multiple pastry layers while basbusa mm-hmm. is a cake. Like cake. It's a semolina cake. But unlike, it's not fluffy. It's very dense because it's semolina. So okay. it's kind of like in terms of texture, mm-hmm. probably closer to like, have you ever had like an almond cake? Yeah. No, no. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you think along an almond cake with like, a more syrupy flavors as yes. well in it. It's like yes, it's like abs- it has absolutely uh, gorgeous. Yeah, rose water, a bit of like o- o- orange water, uh, zest, and things like that. It's very flavorful. It's quite dense. You typically have them in very small portions, mm-hmm. uh, unlike a cake that you would have in like a slice. And um, uh, at entering, the first thing she'd do is look for a place to take off her shoes. <laughs> right. And they would actually be like a place just right off yeah. to the side. And like, they'd be like a little, almost like a little console table. They'd be a bucket for like umbrellas, coat, coat, like stand and all that. So like, you'll see some slippers and stuff like house slippers mm-hmm. in there because like coming from Mali, like wearing shoes in the house isn't always, you know, the thing. So <laughs> you'd see that there's some slippers just kind of like neatly tucked in there. So, yeah, and I'm yeah. not, I would definitely reach at the door and say, thank you for coming. And oh, wow, thank you so much. It's been a while since we've had any like home cooked goods. I don't mean like home cooked as in my home, but you know what I mean. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I completely understand. Um, even though I've been here uh, a good few months now, it's been a while since I've also been invited to someone's home. So thank you. Oh, and, well. Uh, your home is quite wonderful. Oh, thank you. Uh, my parents have, well, my family have worked very hard for all that we have. I'm always grateful and I'm always happy to share it with new people. So I'm I'm very glad that you happen to be there today. Um, we're always looking for, I suppose, like-minded people who are always driven by a, a bit of sense of adventure. And as Amanada is like kind of taking the tree and like, bringing you in i'm just kind of like pointing out all the different rooms if you if you need anything at all this is you know this is our housekeeper she doesn't like us calling her by her name so i tend to call her cc and yes if you need anything just let me know let cc know she has the ears off I don't know, she can hear everything, everything you could possibly think of. Um, and she almost can read your mind. She'll know what to bring you before you even ask for it yourself. Um, now please Thank come you. through. The rest of the party are in the dining room and they're looking forward to seeing you again. So Thank you, you so all much. come in, you have a very nice meal, okay? Um, do you have any like, any questions for Farouz or Farouz, do you have any questions for the party? Yeah, first of all, yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah, you go, go, you go first. Okay, uh, first of all, you see, and it's very much like Anklagon the Great. We call him Anki for short, the dragon. So you brought her food. She's now your best friend. Um, she shared with, with Anki as well, and they both loved it. Um, so you see, you see, we just want to ask, like, where where have you been? How long have you been working for Madame Gautier? Because we visited her shop a couple of times and we've never seen you. We would have definitely remembered. Um, well, it's actually quite uh, recent that I started working there. Uh, I met her while I was uh, studying at the Sorbonne for a bit of a short period. And um, well, I mean, she seems like quite a fascinating woman and I wanted to learn more about uh, art history. I have been, um, well, working under an art history for a while back in uh, Constantinople. Um, and then I moved here for the Sorbonne and that's when I met her. 
Well, immediately Eustine is like super impressed because Sorbonne um, means a lot. Eustine has an academic background herself. She's a bit of a scholar, so she studied in the University of Ghent. Ghent. Um, so she appreciates that and she's very much like, oh, mm. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, how long have uh, all of you known each other? Oh, uh, well, I knew Justine well before, I suppose, we met the rest of the party. Um, we've known each other for maybe a couple of years now. We yeah. met at a, it was a diplomatic party and we were some of the youngest people there. And, you know, some of those things can just be so, so tedious and so boring with all the you know all the sniffing at each other and pomp and circumstance and so we just naturally over the course of the night graduate like move together and since then we've been sending letters back and forth we've kept in touch and yeah uh i met justine i met up with my justine again fairly recently where we i suppose amanata is going to look at justine kind of gauge should i just spill all your family trauma like what are we doing here yeah. um you seen you seen would, would would kind of see that and she would take it off from here because she wouldn't want to load this responsibility on amanata so you seem to like yes i traveled to the south of france from belgium to find my brother who we thought was dead in the war um but then i heard that he was still alive and I stopped in Paris and I'm an Asha, my dearest friend. She she agreed to help me and she abandoned this beautiful home and traveled all the way, all the way down with me. Uh, we found my brother. He is, he's at home. He's, he's alive. Um, he's with my parents. He's still recovering. So it's a, it's a happy end. She kind of says slightly reluctantly because her brother is not okay. <laughs> he's I think at home, he but he's alive. I think if he is um, around um, people who love him and will support him, he will ultimately be all right. Um, I'm sorry for what happened. Um, I'm glad you found him, and uh, I wish him a speedy recovery. I don't, I don't know the circumstances, but I hope he recovers quick and well. So do we all, we all do. Thank you so much, you're very kind. Um, and yeah, I believe that um, Sylvia and, and Mina, they knew each other slightly before Eustin is just trying to kind of switch, <laughs> <laughs> bring the conversation silence. away from, from herself. In, like we only met the rest of the party, like I think in January, but like I met her because I was looking for my brother too. And I met Sylvia in a hospital, but then I moved to. Uh, Sylvia is starting to look and... really uncomfortable right now. She's just like, oh, I do not want to talk about this. <laughs> and, and, you know, I've been looking and a little more, and then we ran into each other and decided to travel together. Sylvia and I just for. Um, you know, numbers, security kind of a thing. And then well, we run into the rest together, of you know. Um, <laughs> and then we run into the, the rest of all these um, crazy people. So, yeah. My we story is, watch is similar. It's it's simple. It's not as dramatic as per um or Sylvia's. She says quietly. Sylvia <laughs> <laughs> so was... gives you a fucking shut up <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all the sugar is going to come out, you know, yeah. all these cakes. Um, yeah, I was, I was, I, I wished for adventure. I left my home in Exeter and traveled south to France. We had heard about the war at home, of course. Um, there's not a great sea in between the south of England uh, and France. And my family are healers of sorts. And so I decided to come and see what I could of learn. Of sorts, and, yes. Of sorts, yes. Um, every plant is a, is medicinal in one way or another, would be our philosophy. Medicinal for death. <clears throat> some of them. Sometimes that's um. just the medicine that's needed. Uh -huh. um, and that's it, really. I met the group traveling to, well, originally I was heading for Paris. Fairies. <laughs> And yes, we have we have had many adventures 
Faroos, you will you will learn. I'm sure you'll hear all about them this evening. Some of it more nefarious than others. We became trapped in the fair realm for a little while and we lost three weeks. But you know, uh, it was fine. We got out and so um, when she says that to you, Faroos, that's a big deal <laughs> because humans that end up in the fair realm usually don't come back and quite often when they do they find that huge periods of time have passed it's very common that if a human ends up in the fey realm that if and when they come back they like time catches up and and they age a century in a matter of minutes and turn to dust and ash Ooh. so like the fact that the party are like sylvia casually saying oh we ended up in the fey realm and lost a couple of weeks you're like what the fuck like seriously <laughs> like <laughs> that's not casual conversation here well in, in yeah. Venice when we ended up in the fair realm we did get some very very helpful um guidance from three witches uh who led us back out uh so not as much time passed as we've well as we're well accustomed to hearing and there was a time I ended up in the fair realm by myself um that was quite interesting but again I was led out fairly promptly so I did not lose much time at all well it's it's wonderful to meet such storied adventuring women um I haven't encountered anyone who's been to the fair realm let alone been there twice um I haven't had anything that exciting happening happen to me, unfortunately. I did leave Constantinople because I grew bored of it and I don't want to go back to Damascus. I, I want to see the world and I want to experience things for my own and let's say for my own opinion about things. And um, that brought me here to Paris and a good part of me is feeling ready to also leave Paris quite soon. At that, at that, Amanada is going to just kind of like have this big grin on their face and say, you are with the best company. We are quite adventurous people. I'm very grateful that we've all managed to kind of find each other in this crazy, crazy world. And we're all very strong willed. We want to experience things for ourselves. So that's why I invited you to dinner. I just got this feeling that you were like minded, like kin. So hopefully we'll be able to go to all these different places together. I don't intend to keep staying in Paris. Um, yes, I love my family, but like anyone else, I want to leave them very far, far behind at times. Um, so <laughs> yes, it'll be. we'd love to have you join us at, for this next sort of journey and maybe for more if you feel that we'll fit together. And um, I would love that. Thank you so much. When um, Aminata just mentioned, sometimes I want to leave my family far, far behind. Like Mina's eyes just kind of widen and she goes like... Yeah, <laughs> Sylvia kind of just, and she got, Sylvia's going to glance over at Mina and just be kind of, just look down at this kind of thing. <laughs> oh, um, Ferus, can you give me um, your first roll of our game? Um, can you give me an awareness roll? Okay, so that's just going to be a plus two. Okay, uh, D20 plus yeah. two. Roll well. No! no! So, okay, you, so you, 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 do not, you do not pick up on that look at all, okay? <laughs> Okay, I don't so, pick up on those looks. No. And meanwhile, Aminata would, would see that uh, Feroz looks at you with, with relating of wanting to leave your family and just like doesn't even bat an eyelash, just goes, well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I miss my family terribly, but I am so glad that I left <laughs> at the same time. And I'm sure Feroz and the fates have brought us together for a reason. Aminata probably would have mm -hmm. noticed Mina. Mina's kind of look. So I I want to do an awareness roll to try and gauge if it was a case of, you know, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'd love to be back on my family or there's some of my family I'd love to leave behind as well. 
Um, Sylvia had the same kind of a... Because <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely, like, Mina would have known, it was definitely meant in, uh, you know, I like my independence sort of thing, not a, I don't want to just leave my family alone sort of thing. Mm. Shame you guys didn't come from a stable, wholesome family like Gwyn, where nothing ever was weird or strange. Oh, I, I love my family. Stable, I love, wholesome cult. Totally yeah. normal. I Not love my family. Cult. My family are probably so, like some of the most like standard to be honest like uh -huh. not a cult not a cult they don't they don't eat they don't poison others so what was that role um, i'm gonna so that role is a da -da. so that is an hold on it's an 11 but with my awareness two plus wait. one is um that's gonna be um 14. yeah not a great role you're not you don't get a lot from that Okay, that's fine. Okay, so I have a very important question. Does the party want to go and check out this house in the evening? Yes, under yes. cover of darkness. Okay, <laughs> right. At so, the shadiest of times. After dinner. I can see I can see us like having dinner, a bit of wine, and then just being like, let's oh, go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too. So, um, yeah, you, um, you said enjoy a couple of bottles of wine, have a lovely feast, and then with full tummies, you head out into the night air, hoping to explore the enchanted, booby-trapped home of a goblin artificer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> activating night mode. That's wrong. Jeff yes. would be my idea of a good time. I don't have to make the rest. Yeah. So, um, you jump in a cab. It's going to be like... It's going to be like uh, three copper, so someone deduct that from their character sheet, yeah, okay? Um, um, and you do get to the area, okay? So, as I said, he's in a pretty nice part of the city. It wouldn't be too dissimilar to kind of where Amanat is from. Like, we're not talking the crazy, uh -huh, uber-wealthy uh -huh. part of the city, but it's still be a pretty nice part of the city, okay? And um, you get to the address, and it immediately stands out. It looks so weird and out of place, surrounded by all these very beautiful um, terraced and, and detached homes, okay? Um, like, so, so it looks almost like a country farmhouse with a strange and crooked shape to it. There's a high peak roof, and a chimney that looks like it's about to fall over. And in the night, you know, Paris being one of the truly great cities of the world, and um, the streets of Paris are lit by enchanted fairy globe lights. They don't use um, whale oil to light the street lamps here. No, they use enchanted fairy globes. So once night falls, there's a pretty good constant level of illumination. So you can see pretty well in the from the illumination from the fairy globe street lamps there is smoke coming from the chimney as if somebody is living there okay you were told that this goblin like left like three three decades ago about 30 years ago okay so and there's and you just spot some lights on in some of the windows but it's really weird because then a light will turn off and then another light will turn on somewhere else so it's it's, it's very very strange okay there's there's a bit of there's some grounds in front of it okay so there's a, you do spot there's a, there's a, there's a, it's not a wall, it's like a, a very high, thick hedge instead of a wall that kind of forms the boundary. But there is a, an iron, simple iron pedestrian gate that leads into the grounds, all right? Um, but um, yeah, it's looking really strange and he's like, he's pointing, he's looking at it. But then as you are kind of looking at each other, trying to figure out what to do and you look back, its form has changed. And whereas a minute ago it was a three-story kind of narrow, slightly lopsided building, now it looks like a squat, wider, two-story building. Okay. Mm -hmm. But have still I with that too peaked much roof. Wine? Yeah. <laughs> or <laughs> have you, do you, has this house just changed? We uh, it might be just like uh, maybe a natural mechanism to deter any, I suppose, any. What, well, what we're going to do, any breaking and entering, and by constantly changing, it makes it so much harder to scope it out, and, you know, this is fun. This is or, amazing. Or it could be it's some sort of illusion. Fascinating. It could be. So, mm -hmm. um, I think... Uh, just, just give me one second here. 
I just want to look up the range. So, okay, it's a little bit outside the range of your Detect Magic spell, Justine. Your Detect Magic spell is 10 meters currently. That does go up as you let. It's 3 meters plus 1 meter per level. So, for you currently, it's 10 meters. And the distance from where you are on the street to the front of the house itself looks like it's maybe 12, 15 meters. So, you would need to go into the grounds a bit before you could cast any spell to Detect Magic from the house. Uh, um, before we go onto the grounds, can I detect any traps and hidden secrets, please? You can certainly try. That does not fill me with confidence, but okay. Faris, did you notice something about the house? I would like to um, watch it as it changes and try to keep watch if anything remains consistent through all of the different mm -hmm. shapes okay give me and um, just give me a straightforward awareness roll on that okay awareness plus two okay you have an awareness of one and key mm -hmm. so that's plus two. yeah okay that's a dirty 20. interestingly mm -hmm. enough you do watch as the for as the house shifts form to different combinations of always kind of looking almost like a rustic um, farmhouse. But the one consistent thing is this weird lopsided chimney that always looks like it's about to fall off the, the roof. And a high peaked roof. Okay. So, Amanada? My role is a 23 with keen eyes. Yeah, the, the front gate does not appear to be trapped. That's about as far as you could check, you know, where you are. You need to be physically going inside to be checking further, but you're quite confident that, yeah, I could open this gate, walk in, it wouldn't be a problem. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to share that with the group. Um, I'll also tell the group that the only uh, consistent thing is the lopsided mm -hmm. uh, roof and that it's always some sort of farmhouse. Mm -hmm. Uh, th and was there a third thing that was always consistent? No, that was basically it. And it always looks like a farmhouse, okay. you know? Yeah, okay. Hmm. Wasn't there a chimney um, as well you mentioned? The you? chimney stays the same. Oh, the chimney yeah. is always looks like it's with a fall off. <laughs> oh, so it wasn't lopsided yeah. roof, it was the chimney. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. The lopsided oh. chimney. Right. Okay, that doesn't Nail. change on the inside yes. as well. Could be dangerous. Yes. And I just... Like Mina wants to see if there, like, is a pattern that repeats with the shapes. Well, I mean, it's not really shapes. It, it's I want to see if it cycles through different shapes. That if it repeats or if it's you know, is it just kind of there no pattern? Oh is it random? no, like it's it's not a set pattern. It flips between you know. So, question about what team? Uh -huh. Sorry, yes. Oh, she's frozen. So what is it? Two shapes that it's that no, it flips it's between. A, it's it? a couple uh, of different um, shapes, like maybe four or five. No, sorry, Neve, what did you say there? No apologies. I'm not sure if you got me. I froze there for a second. The front door. Did, I mean, yeah. does that um, move every time it shifts, or no? The front door actually stays the same. Okay. Okay. It's a chimney at the front door. Like I mm -hmm. guess the front door itself changes, but the, the where it is stays the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, at least there's a way in. Well, chimney, um, if anything, we can send Anki through the chimney. Mm, yeah, that's a good idea. Would, that could be great, just to see through his eyes what it's like on the inside. If it's safe. And how much it changes. Hmm. If even. As yeah. a fake creature, he may also be immune to any of the traps that are in the area. Ah. We, um, that is a possibility. I am just a bit hesitant to send Anki in alone. Um, but yes, that might be our safest bet because, as it currently is, there's no traps on the gate leading onto the property. But that's Mundane. not to say two steps in. Mundane traps. Uh, I well, I'd be able to detect any magical traps too. Uh, with that higher level, with that sorry, with that higher role, you would, um, at the very least, spot like an arcane glyph or something, you know. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I was able to do it in the frame yeah, Remember? Yeah. 
Okay. Maybe, yeah, send in Anki. Be careful, yeah. Anki. Yeah, let's send in Anki. Um, just maybe not through the chimney straight away, but maybe just to 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 fly around the house and see what he spots. If anything. Uh -huh. Oui, yes. Um. Okay, so you want to send Anglagon. And yes. you want to send them to go into the and house. And at least. Uh, not not into the chimney just yet, but just kind of fly around um, and see. And maybe look into a window or two, yeah. Yeah, maybe he'll spot something else, or especially with those windows. If no, we probably can't can't track them. Um, the ones that were like lighting up, but if they changed, probably uh, doesn't. The, the, with the lights appearing it is random as well. Yeah. So yeah, okay. So he if you send them off, he flies in. So looking down on the ground, uh, he can he can yeah. look in and see what looking, he sees inside. You know, looking down on the grounds, what he sees is it looks like the actual garden is filled with like a hedge maze that winds. It's not like complex. The path leading to the front gate or uh, front door is fairly straightforward, mm -hmm. and you can see thick rose briars growing through the hedge. Okay, um, so that's what he spots. Oh, nice. that's, that's not even an awareness roll. Okay, it's quite obvious when you wait for you to see it so getting up to the house okay give me an awareness roll to see what he may or may not spot uh let me put his stats give me a second because i think you have some motivator for awareness sorry <laughs> Oh, lanky. I always get worried for him when he goes off alone. I know! Oh, he's a baby! He's a baby! So, what was that roll? What did you roll on the die? That roll was 15, uh, plus 3 for awareness, and he has keen eyes as well. Okay, so, so. 19. Okay, so, um, flying up and circling around, he looks through a few of the windows. And he sees a bunch of different um, rooms, um, and they're very different. Like, so at one stage, he sees what looks like a fine drawing room. He sees a haunted bedroom. He sees what looks to be maybe some sort of an artificer's lab. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, another room that looks like maybe a library. Um, but it's weird because he circles a few times and like when he does and you can see through his eyes because he's your familiar um, like on at least like on each of the three circles of the of the of the house looking through a window he sees what looks like a uh, some sort of an artificer's laboratory or a potion maker's laboratory and each time it seems to be a different room. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Interesting. So the house changes on the inside as well. Yeah, it look and like he'll swing around and one on the first lap he'll look in and through one window it looks like one room, and then he comes back around and then through the same window the room has changed and then by the time he's got a third time the entire structure has changed. Oh, that's so trippy. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Be yeah. honest, Neil. Did you have a plan in advance? Or or did I give you a freaking idea when you said we shouldn't go scouting because things could be changing? <laughs> no. I just like fun, trippy things. <laughs> so what is the plan, folks? Did you gonna... actually, like, we, we went there during the day just to have a look at it. Did he change no, in during the day? No, he decided, he decided not to go on the day in the end. We only went at night. Oh, um, it might be be worth seeing if uh maybe if we go back to madame's and see if there's any sort of like oils that will allow us to kind of like see what the truth is or, or you know see you, it through the illusion you could I just try to spell magic you could just go in closer to the to the house and try to use some magic mm -hmm. There are oils. There are oils of true sight that allow you to maybe see fey creatures, but there's um, nothing that allows yeah. the invisible fey the pure illusions. See though. and see, see true illusions and see invisible fey, mm. but like not so on this scale. If, if, if this say. is an illusion, 
magics like the true side spell which would 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 show you what the true thing oh, it would. Is hiding. Oh, oh yeah because that's, that's literally what, what that spell is for and um, so if, if this is an illusion then the true side spell or oil of true sight or glasses of true sight would show you what the true image is that's what i was thinking however uh, if it's not an illusion well if we don't have the spell there might be like goggles we can get Oh, I, I'm sure there are beautifully expensive glasses that <laughs> I know, you would I know. Maybe get that, that would, would um, glasses probably. of true sight. Yeah, I didn't think it worked on 400, that scale. Four hundred gold it. for a pair of glasses of true sight. <laughs> yes. And how many powerpoints? Probably. That is very rare. What about yeah, oils of true cool. sight, though? Is oh, there oil of true oils, sight? oils of true sight. So that, that is might, that might be cheaper. Yeah, that's you could definitely look at look at something like that. Like so, fairy oil, for example. So that mm -hmm. is an ointment that, when you apply to the eyes of a human or fae touched, can now see all fae when they are invisible. Yeah, that doesn't have no, a cost because that is a legendary fey item. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, this, yeah. this is this is what I was trying to kind of say. Like it's kind of you know. that's a good idea. It's um, a good idea, but or you could just go into the garden and cast some spells and see what happens. Does any does does anybody have the true sight spell? No, that's no, a third level spell. spell magic. Third level sphere of twilight. Okay. Uh, know, Rosa, did you did you notice anything? Who? Um only the only the only one I mentioned. Yeah. Um so how are we approaching are we trying to approach stealthily, perhaps? Hmm. That is a good idea. And, and I'm not, of course, you have the ring. I don't know how effective the ring of invisibility would be against something like this, but it, it certainly makes you stealthy. Well, it, it would definitely well, assist in being stealthy, but it might not be stealth that we need on our, on, you know, our side. Like, well, I also would have the additional defense from it. So if something did get triggered, I'd probably be a bit better off than most of ye um i can i can definitely give it a try well um you can do that uh for you and um if anyone needs some help being a bit more quiet i can so are, are we are we just going to, are we just going to try and go into this house now or well, what else are you gonna do Okay. Yeah. Um, like, I mean, mm. I, I personally don't want to stand and stare at it all night. Yeah, this is it. I think since we're here, we should at least go inside. Oh, oh, okay. Um, Aminata at that point is just going to grab a little ring and slip slip it onto their finger and see what we can find. Yeah, you now point. see Aminata slip a ring onto her finger, um, and then they turn invisible. <laughs> So turns out the they have a legendary yeah. magical item to turn invisible. We haven't figured okay. out uh, if she see, if she sees anything or yeah. so, if she changes in any mm -hmm. way yet. So if there's the, any calls. Faruzi, and we're going Gwen to... is going to go with Aminata and you see Faruz sees Gwen kind of shudder and her muscles twitch and she does this really kind of disgusting transformation into a cat it is in no way graceful at all like black hair spreads over her face and her hands and she shrinks down and bones are cracking and this tiny little black cat appears and just um, toddles on towards uh, I, <laughs> I have a quick question are we just standing on the footpath and oh, yeah. doing this yeah absolutely yeah, yeah 100 <laughs> oh, okay so we're well fueled by wide and food campaign one people were like what yeah. the fuck what the um, there's a few people walking <laughs> yeah. around but thankfully nobody is immediately close to you the closest person is three four meters away so you don't think anybody spotted yeah, so, Gwen probably, I, I would okay. like to retcon and say Gwen would have just looked over her shoulder before she You still would have done it, Gwen, let's be honest. <laughs> you <laughs> you would have totally, totally done it, like, yeah. Sylvia, did you want to do anything? I want to cast Restorative Spark on everybody. 
Thank you. Well, Kamenada uh, yeah. has disappeared, so you don't know where she is, so you can't cast it on her. <laughs> well, I can easily just slip off the ring again. I haven't walked in yet. <laughs> right, um, so you cast a sort of spark on everybody. And Ferus? Yeah. yeah, before uh, the remaining four of us uh, go in, I would sort of like um, have them go... Before I do the question, is there enough? I know it's well lit, but is there enough shadow? Oh yeah. Well, where you are right now is quite well lit, but once you go into the gardens, there's plenty of shadow because it's okay. quite the so hedges. Then... Remember, it's like a hedge maze. So these, so these hedges are like two meters high. Mm, okay. So, because what I would like to do, and let me know if this is possible, mm -hmm. uh, when we are close enough, I would want to cast a shadow cloak. Mm -hmm. And um, I can extend it, uh, I believe, to four people total um, just, at I the cost think of that month. sounds right, yeah. Um, yeah, you can increase the number of targets at a cost of two mana per target to a number maximum number equal to your magic score and your magic score. Your magic score is four. is four. So you could cast this on four people, yes, at a cost of eight mana. Yeah. Fantastic. Yes, well, so... mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah no, so I'll continue. cast it on on, on um, myself and the other three. So that's four. So that uh, basically um, you would end up uh, kind of you would have a uh, plus four mm -hmm. to your stealth. stealth. Shadows um, start clinging and, to your bodies from around well, you and lingering, well, making it easier to hide yourselves, and you get a plus four bonus to stealth. Uh, with that, while while you're doing this, you seem you seem to like looking very impressed because she knows some sphere of twilight herself, and she's like, "Oh, I know what you're doing. I know what you're casting here. Okay, okay, yeah, very cool, <laughs> good stuff." Yeah. And, Thank you. Uh, yes. Yeah, me not taking out Albert just for emotional support, <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> Staying close to uh, Farouz for the um, shadowy goodness. Okay, right. So, mm -hmm. um, casting this spell to try and help you with your, um, to try and help you hide yourselves. You open the gate, it does creak. It is an old rusted iron gate. So, when you open it, it most certainly does creak. Okay. Um, but it does open nonetheless. It's not even locked. Okay, before we go anywhere further, can I try to detect magic? Um, or is it any so, so let me just look up that spell. What's the duration of it again? One minute per magic. So you could cast that spell as you enter, and that will stay active for... You have a magic of four, don't you? Or so five. So that stays active for five minutes. Okay. So for five minutes, um, you are I... getting, you are able to sense any magic in a 10 meter radius around you. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, yes. I also, mm -hmm. also, because like I think this is one of her um, um, biggest uh, adventures right now, I would also like to. Um, if I can, I don't know if I can stack spells on myself, mm. um, but sure, I would like can. to also, I would like to cast uh, Alchemist's Armor as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, does that one last a number of rounds? Because that's maybe one you should... Uh, yeah, actually, hold on, let me just look at our Alchemist's Armor. Like, no, it's... It's, it's last a number of rounds, or is one it... Minute. Uh, oh, one, it's up to one minute, so... Oh. Yeah, yeah or be... until all the damage is over. Then cast it as soon as we gauge. I don't. Okay, I don't okay. want to. I don't want to tell you how to how to run stuff. It's just that those kind of things. Well, are, I mean, you're new yeah. to the system, but it's better. I, all the magic is new to me, and um, I just yeah. read dura a special duration. And I was so like, okay, maybe it'll be long so enough. Spe so the thanks. special duration, so, yeah. basically, how those how the armor based spells work is it effectively works like temp grit, temp hit points, and um, absorbing damage. Okay, so okay. the spell lasts okay. until the the extra temp hit points is absorbed, or one minute. So a it's a idea, spell though. that you it's a spell that you generally will cast in the first round of combat or when you know that combat is literally just about to start. Okay. 
Okay, so. Um, right, so, so um, Justine, you cast um, Detect Magic, okay? Yeah. You are immediately hit by a strong, like, wave of magic surrounding you, coming from mm. all of the hedges, um, mm. magic that appears to be from the sphere of the wild. So within the 10 meter radius of you, mm. the hedges in the garden all give off an aura of magic from the sphere of the wild. Okay, I think you've seen us going to kind of like shake a little bit and almost fall and be like, uh -huh. boom, didn't expect that. Um, mm -hmm. but the place is riddled with magic. It's, yeah. it's everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Uh, yeah, I everywhere. was kind of expecting that. Plus, and, you uh, pick some the, lights up. The only, um, and this is interesting for you now, because I don't know if you've ever noticed this before, but you also pick up the enchantments of the various magical items that everybody is carrying, yeah. except for one, Amanada, you don't detect. Mm. So it would seem that the invisibility ring, part of its enchantment is that it also masks your detection from magics such as the detect magic spell. Now, mm. if you had, if you cast True Sight, you would be able to see her. Because that spell is specifically to break illusions of invisibility. invisibility but detect yeah. magic will not detect somebody invisible. Mm. Very good. Very mm. good. That's so, funny. do we venture forth? So, hang on. Yes. Okay, cool. Yes. Um, yes. We going I'm in? Yep. I'm right. Anada and Gwyn. So, is, are, is everybody going in or are we just letting the cat and the um, invisible rogue go in? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's go with the cat and the invisible person. Okay, is no, is no one else following them? No. Nah. Um, I mean, I'm going to see if they get mauled to death. Okay. Or not, so yeah, I mean, that's totally <laughs> just kind of. No. I think, <laughs> Thanks. I think I'll, I'll follow. I'm going okay, to. Okay, so Farouz, you follow the little yeah. black cat. And Sylvia will we... absolutely yeah. follow. She's not going to. Okay, oh. Gwen will just run around your feet as we go. Staying close. Well, Yasin is going to follow too. She'll be like, oh. Yeah, same then. If everybody <laughs> goes, I'm like, for oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out for the times. We're all the planet is on my shopping list. So, <laughs> yeah. um, once you, you start to go in through the, it's like about a meter wide. Well, actually, no, it's not quite. It's, it's not quite a meter wide um path. Okay, with two mm. meter hedging on either side, with these beautiful um iron um rose briars growing through the hedging. Okay, as nice. you as of but as you start to step through you see the roses start to turn and shift and move and reach out towards you all. I need oh, everybody, no. everybody. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Dex acrobatics. Oh, okay. oh, including no. you, Amanada. Neil, does, oh, this yeah. count, does this count as a natural setting? I'll allow it. Okay. I'll allow it. <laughs> okay, because this is wild magic, so I'll allow it. Okay, thank you. So uh, everybody, Do, uh, quick reflexes count uh, here. A quick reflexes or acrobatics. Um, so <gasps> unfortunately, oh. you have neither of them. So for you, um, Ferus is just a plus one. Yeah. Okay. Um, and also, um, by the way, um, Amanada, you can also add Cat's Grace to this. Oh, beautiful. Because you're rogue. Um, do I get any benefits being in cat you form? You in cat form get a plus seven to the roll because you are oh, a goodness. cat. I'm going to write that down. Okay. That's okay. good. I, I will eventually give you a stat block for your cat form. I'm really sorry. I keep no, forgetting. Okay. Cool, cool. That is right. 22. So. 21. 22 for me as well. 20 21. to 25. Yes. Yeah. 22. Hold on a second. My tabs just all closed down so i just need to open that up again okay it happens i actually rolled well for a change on my actual mina dice <laughs> so um did i so i'm what did you get what did you roll Cheat anymore. I rolled an 18. Okay, well, then you definitely got more than 20, uh, more than 20 because it's like oh, a plus right. seven to your yeah. roll. So, so yeah. the three of you managed to dodge as the, as the rose briars go dark between you. 
Um, 15 to 20. Okay. Okay, that's not bad. All right. Everybody manages to dodge. And you get a couple of meters in, but they are continuing to move and try to grasp at you, trying to cut on you with their thorns. So I need fresh dex rolls from everybody. I can't use magic in cat form, right? No. Okay. No. That is crazy. No, you cannot. Decisions, decisions. But you have a plus seven right now. Yes, but you I are higher, so... not as the cat. Yeah, but you are <laughs> so much more dexterous as a cat. Yeah, true. You have very few grip points, but you are so dexterous as okay, a cat. If anyone gets really stuck, I'll change back. Point okay. two one, Neil. This. Okay. Wait, hold on a second. A Fifteen. Oh, that's a thirty-six. <laughs> oh Jesus. Okay, um, Rose. Okay. Um, I get plus ten from my ring for dexterity. So oh, I rolled yeah. an eighteen. And no, that's time. only that's only for um, stealth. Oh, sorry, just for stealth. Yeah, not for okay, dex. Fine. Yeah. Um, well, you still get a plus seven. Yeah, that's still quite a lot, so... Yeah, okay, so... Did anybody roll less than a 15? I rolled exactly a 15. You yes, Dean? I rolled a 16, excuse wow. me. Wow, okay. <laughs> think... oh, oh. oh, Ferris, no. What did you roll, for this? Oh, yeah, okay. 16. Okay, right, right. So you have gotten no. about four meters in there's still about maybe 10 12 meters to go i need a fresh stack i got roll. a dirty 20. it's still be a roll <laughs> dirty 20. Uh, dirty 20. So, so let's fresh no. dex rolls everybody you should do exceptionally well 18. Okay. Oh, oh. 22 again 19. Oh, okay 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 dirty 20. yeah uh, that is a 23. Oh. okay user over how about 18. 18 years okay well you guys are shockingly oh good God. Um, you know you know you know how some people when they get a bit tipsy they they think that they speak more languages than they actually do i think it's it's you you seen in like dex rolls oh okay because <laughs> yeah. well, all seen... of a sudden the drunker you get the more dexterous you are <laughs> yeah. but, hey, do you know this, what the drunker again, i get the better at archery good. i am but hold on, both you and your character speak four it languages. But it's it's true. terrifying. <laughs> both you and your character speak four languages. So like... <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, did anybody not get a 15 or higher? All right, nice super. Thing. Okay, yeah, so... Did, yeah. Oh, um, let's, at exactly the same time and so yeah, right. let's keep yeah, going let's keep it, going it, here, sir. Uh, you still we still need two more part. rolls okay to get through <laughs> to the front door yeah. 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 Uh, so like as as um Feroz is moving through this she's like i usually like gardens these are not the kind of gardens i like and i've never been attacked by a garden I'm before <laughs> i like roses but not like this mm. 23 18. Wow. 18. Oh no. Three? We have our single digit. Oh, I no. I did not roll well at all. What did you uh, get? What did you get, Amanada? What did you get? <laughs> oh, no, I, I, got, I only rolled a five. So no, I only like... You have a plus seven. You have a plus <laughs> seven, so. Doesn't matter. And uh, Yasin, what did you get? He's still under. <laughs> okay, so this time some of the some of the thorns catch you, Ferruz, and also you, Amanada. It's like they can see you through your invisibility. You, um, so Ferruz, you take probably. two points of damage. Amanada, you only take one point of damage. But okay. as they cut into you, they absorb some of the the blood and they grow bigger. Oh no! no. Uh, so oh, I need a final roll fine. from everybody. So the target number, going... the target okay. number is now seventeen. Oh, oh geez. Because oh, the roses terrible. have grown bigger. I was gonna oh my was god! Roll. You have two rolls. You have done. You have like you know you roll nineteen. Oh, I rolled a one okay. and a seven. Oh okay. No, okay. So okay. yeah, 26. twenty-six. Yay. Nineteen. Nice, Justine. Oh, and I saw I. I got a 16 and I have a plus one, so I got exactly 17. Ooh, okay. Well, unfortunately, Sylvia, with your terrible rolls, you do get cut and you take two points mm -hmm. of damage. But with that final stumble, you all get through. 
standing in front of the front door front of door. the Goblin Artifices home. So one thing, as I said, that the two things that didn't seem to change was this crooked chimney that looked like it was about to fall off the roof and the front door, which stayed the exact same in place and in image and form. Standing there, getting ready to go in and see what puzzles and tricks await you all. I think this is a perfect place to pause in our story. Okay. So thank you all for joining us. Um, and we shall see you next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Good night, all. Bye. 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 Bye.